Hey class, it's your TA, Trevor, and I'm here to tell you about some of the beautiful trees we see in the Rocky Mountains. I'm standing inside of this bad boy, Lodgepole Pine, Pinus contorta. All right, so we can identify this tree by a couple of different things. It's got needles and fascicles of two. It's one of the only trees in the Rocky Mountains that has needles and fascicles of two. The other tree is not seen in these mountains and it's not really around Laramie, so if you're around Laramie and in the mountains, you see needles and fascicles of two, Lodgepole pine, that's your baby. All right, we've also got little tiny cones. A lot of lodgepole pine cones are serotonous, and we'll talk about that later, what that means, but that's an adaptation to fire. The growth form that I'm standing in is a little atypical. Most lodgepole pines are pretty tall, uh, pretty uniform uh, in their distribution across the landscape with uh, their crowns sort of up tall and not really having any branches near to the ground. Uh, this one is not like that, but don't be fooled. We see needles and fascicles of two and tiny little cones is lodgepole pine. The, uh, the bark on this guy is kind of gray, a little bit like cornflakes, but I wouldn't recommend putting them in a bowl with milk because that would taste bad. All right. Hi class, it's your TA, TA Trevor, and I'm here to tell you about the next tree on our list. Uh, Pinus flexilis, uh, limber pine. <laughs> limber pine's a white pine, and white pines have needles and fascicles of five. When you're in the southern Rockies and you see a tree with needles and fascicles of five, clear to say it's a limber pine. However, in the northern Rockies, there's another uh, white pine called white bark pine, Pinus apicalis. Uh, that's on our tree ID list, you can look at it. Uh, but it's not in the southern Rockies. So in addition to these short needles and fascicles of five, they also have these longish scaled cones. I don't think there's anything that quite looks like them. Ooh. The pollen cones or the male cones on uh, Pinus flexilis are yellow, so you can also tell that apart when they're uh, in flower. Uh, these pines generally don't grow too tall and they have low apical dominance. That means that they're kind of spread out instead of being really pointy. Uh, they're a cool tree. I like them a lot. They're very flexible. Ooh, look at that flex. <sighs> look at that bend. That's how they got their name. <laughs> yep. Hey class, it's your TA, TA Trevor. We're here to talk about the next tree on our Rocky Mountain tree list. This one's Ponderosa Pine, Pinus Ponderosa. What an easy Latin name. I already got one memorized. All right, so this tree, beautiful tree, uh, can be identified in a variety of different ways. Through its really orangish plated bark. It also has these really nice, distinct, picturesque pine cones right here. Needles and fascicles of three that are about an inch or two long, or uh, six ish centimeters long. And this tree is also wonderful because uh, it smells beautifully in the Rocky Mountains. It smells like butterscotch or vanilla or uh, honey. It smells sweet. It smells delicious. You, you decide what it smells like, but it's definitely got a smell and it definitely smells good. It is a beautiful tree. I think if you ask anybody in the Lachlan lab uh, if they are partial to a specific tree, uh, we'd say this one because it's quite great. Hey class, it's your TA, TA Trevor, here to tell you about the next tree on our list, Populus tremuloides, quaking aspen or trembling aspen. It's one of our angiosperm trees, which means it is not a gymnosperm, not a conifer, does not have cones. It's got these cool little uh, circular leaves that quake in the wind when you blow on them. It's much more majestic when mother nature does it. They've got these nice smooth white pale bark that's a little bit uh, dusty to the touch. You get a little residue on your uh, fingertips right here. They generally grow in these clonal stands, so when you see one, you see a lot. And in the fall, when they change color, you can tell the different genetic individuals apart from each other because they change leaves at the same time, so it's pretty, pretty neat. Hey class, it's your TA, TA Trevor, here to tell you about the next tree on our list. 
This lovable giant right here is Engelman spruce, Picea Engelmanii. These spruce are pretty big, pretty old. They generally dominate the subalpine forests instead of the lower forests in the Rocky Mountain. They've got this nice reddish flaky bark. They also have these small scaly cones. Look at that. Their needles, which are up in the canopy right now and I can't quite reach, are in fascicles of one. They're generally pretty stiff and pretty sharp and a little bit pokey. It might be easy to confuse this with a Bias lasiocarpa or subalpine fir, which is another tree on our list. However, the cones for a Bias lasiocarpa generally do not fall to the ground. They disintegrate into the wind before reaching them. And the needles, although they are in fascicles of one, are less stiff and uh, a little bit blunt to the touch. Hey class, it's your TA, TA Trevor, here with another tree on a Rocky Mountain tree list. This big beautiful tree is uh, Rocky Mountain Juniper, Juniperus scopulorum. So this is different from the other conifers that we've seen on our list. Uh, it's in a different family. The other ones were in the Pinaceae, this one is in the Cupressaceae. And so some of these differences that we see are primarily in the needles. Uh, we consider these to be scale-like. Uh, so there's these different little plates that overlap uh, to create these sort of, yeah, like scaly needles. Pretty neat. Uh, we've also got their quote-unquote cones, which are uh, also their juniper berries. So you could, I suppose, make gin out of this in your bathtub, but I'm going to officially say that's not a good idea. Uh, this is a really beautiful Cupressaceae uh, juniper that's in the general basins and foothills of the Rocky Mountains. We can see we are at the schoolyard right now in a dry environment. Uh, they generally do pretty well in these dry environments. Um, cool tree! Hey class, it's your TA, TA Trevor, but I'm here behind the camera on this one. We're looking at this lovely subalpine fir, Bias lasiocarpa. Appropriately, we are in the subalpine right now, out in the snowies. So this tree is quite wonderful. You might get it confused with Engelmann spruce, but as I said earlier, the needles on subalpine fir are not pointy. Friendly fir, spiky spruce. Additionally, the cones for this bad boy generally don't make it to the ground. Uh, they, when they are in cone, are upright on the branches in the upper branches. And they look like little birds uh, perching on the branches. They don't make it to the ground because they sort of uh, dissolve into the wind and spread their seeds all over the landscape. If we get up close, we can take a look at the bark. Generally, there's two sort of little bark forms that I like to think of when I think of subalpine fir. We've got... This one right here, which is really smooth, kind of like corks. Um, there are some varieties of the species called cork bark firs. Um, so it's, it's kind of corky. Pretty white, pretty pale, pretty smooth. And I don't know if I can find, I might have to stop the video and start again. Uh, oh, nope, over here. Boop, boop, boop. When the trees get older, They get more furrowed and more gray, uh, like this. So this is still a subalpine fir, a Bias lasiocarpa, but it's just a little older, so the bark is getting these furrows. Howdy class, it's your TA, Trevor, here with your final video on the Rocky Mountain trees. We've got here Douglas fir, Sudatsuga mincesii, affectionately referred to as Duggos by a lot of people, including myself. <laughs> Beautiful tree, really common throughout the Rocky Mountains and also California and the Cascades. The cones for this are really distinct. We'll go over it a little bit more in class. Um, they've got this nice little tail coming out of the scales, um, which is unlike anything else in the Rocky Mountains or really anywhere else. If we take a close up at the needles, we can see they kind of have this hockey shaped bend to them right at the base. Maybe see that a little bit better on this one. They're also flat and blunt to the touch like fur, but unlike fur, they have cones that come to the ground. 
bark is also quite different. It is uh, more furrowed and a little bit reddish. 